Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. You're welcome to Delhi Fountain, a devotional guide of Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for an opportunity to dwell under your feet this morning. We pray, Lord Almighty, and we thank you once again for who you are and what you are to us. We pray that you take us through your word. Teach us, Lord Almighty, as to dwell under your feet. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Today is November 15th, 2022, Tuesday. Our topic this morning says a prayerful salutation. A prayerful salutation. Our text, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 16 to 18. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 16 to 18. And it says, Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always in every way. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is a sign in every epistle, so I write, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Like I said earlier, our topic says a prayerful salutation. Salutation simply means greeting, the manner at which you greet people, the manner at which you greet. So there are different ways, there are different gesticulations, there are different ways you greet people. Um, like from my place, um, the Igbo place or the Igbo land, when you um, trying to say good morning to someone, you will say Ototoma. Ototoma. So there are different ways. The Yorubas have their way of greeting, the Igbos, the Hausas, the Thief, whatever. They have their ways of greeting. Now, the person that wrote this is a man that we know as Paul. Paul. Paul was a major a major missionary in the early Christian life. And a devotional says, the content of the salutation is an expression of a father who wants his children to experience God the same way he has experienced him. Now, when you talk about Paul and you talk about the book to the Thessalonians or the epistle to the Thessalonians, you find out that the first epistle to the Thessalonians or the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians was written when Paul went to Thessaloniki. When he got there, he found out that he had a problem with trying to uh, understand if truly Jesus was the Christ. And after so much debate in the synagogue, he had to leave. It was quite heated and he had to leave. And he sent back Timothy, his son, to continue. Timothy sent back words to him when he came back and he was so encouraged. Then in Second Thessalonians, what actually came up was that the people became very much overzealous. They felt that Jesus' coming was quite imminent. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen today. And so, and Paul found the reason to tell them. And he felt he had to assure them that truly Jesus is coming. Truly Jesus would come. But there are some signs that would happen. There are some signs that you would see and you know that he would come back again. So this is a salutation of Paul to the Thessalonians after the second book. And he says the grace of the Lord. Who is this Paul that is telling us? That is an expression of the father who wants his children to experience God the same way he has experienced him. Did Paul actually experience God? Did he know Jesus? to tell us that he had experienced God and he wants us and he wants the people of um, the Thessalonians to experience God as well. Paul was well grounded right from birth. He was a Roman citizen. 
he was a Jew by birth and he was born in Tessos. So these three things grounded him to the world powers of those days, Italy, Israel and Turkey. So this man was well grounded. Another thing, a man known as MC Neil once said that the Christianity we practice today, broadly speaking, is the Christianity of St. Paul. Also, this man, if you read your Bible very well, Acts chapter 19, verse 12, there were so many miracles that God used them to do. But one of the astounding miracles was the one that the aprons and the handkerchiefs were used to heal people in contact with poor. They were used to heal and deliver people. This is the man that is telling you and I this morning that is the content of our salutation is the expression of a father who wants his children to experience God the way he has experienced him. He experienced him firsthand and he is telling us this morning to experience him. If you look at almost all the epistles of Paul or the Pauline epistles, you find that almost at the end or at the end, he would say the grace of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the grace of the Lord be always with you. Like our devotional says, consider the content of the salutation. Peace from God by all means. The Lord be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. Second Thessalonians 3, 16 and 18. Let us look at the, these words, peace and grace. Very much important in our salutation as Christians every day of our lives. When you look at peace, you find out in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, the Bible made us to understand that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And Paul truly experienced Jesus in Acts of Apostles chapter 9 on his way to Damascus to persecute Christians and Jesus accosted him on the way and he was like who are you Lord and Jesus said I am Jesus whom you are persecuting that encounter never left him every time in his ministry he would always refer to that encounter another one is peace I live with you my peace I give you not as the world gives do I give let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid John chapter 14 verse 27 you, you find out here that God would always give you peace in a troubled situation he wants your nerve to be calm and also when Jesus resurrected when the disciples were afraid they locked themselves in the room in John chapter 20 verse 19 Jesus came in there and said peace be with you be calm I want to calm you down be calm because I've not given you the spirit of fear but that of sound mind I want you to become. Also, in Mark chapter 4, verse 39, when Jesus was moving with his disciples on the Sea of Galilee or Lake of Tiberias, there was a great storm and they called unto Jesus and said, Are you here? We are perishing. Will you stay here and your people would perish? And Jesus said, Peace be still. Peace be still in this time of storm. I want you to be still so you can see that peace is something that god gives you and i to calm us down in a troubled world like nigeria to calm us down in a troubled situation to calm us down in the things that we are seeing the challenges that we're going to see today peace is very very important and we need to extend that peace to one another another one is grace the second one, unmerited favor, something we do not, there are so many angles to grace, but I want to look at it from one angle. Whenever you see grace, you see the, two, the three children. What are the three children? Mercy, blessing, and favor. Mercy is the act of forgiveness. God would always forgive. If we truly come to him, he would always forgive us. God would always bless us. Any time we ask of him, whatever we ask of him, he will give us. That's what the Bible says. And you also know that blessing comes after something has been done. It's a reward for something. That's why when you read the Bible, you always see that God will say, because you have done this, I will bless you. Because you have done that, I will bless you. Now, when you come to favor, favor has nothing, most importantly, it has nothing to do with you. Your contribution, your, your, your wealth, whatever, it has nothing to do with you. It is God's desire at that moment. 
He can favor you for a job to be done. He can lift you up as a junior worker above the seniors for a work to be done. It could be that in your lineage you have people who have served God over the years and the blessing is upon you in, 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 in the form of favor and he takes you on to that. So all of these things, they all come out of God's grace. We don't deserve any of these things. And Paul has summed these two things together in his salutation. The peace of God can calm them in the midst of challenges and assure them of the presence of God around them and by supernatural help, which comes by grace that can surmount troubles and obtain good result in their endeavors. Paul released a salutation that was capable of bringing all round success. That's what the devotion is telling us this morning. That Paul released a salutation that was capable of lifting, lifting up the souls, lifting up the spirit of the people in Thessaloniki. The, the, the Thessalonians were lifted by his word. They were lifted by his salutation. As Christians, what are your prayers for others? especially those who look up to you. What is your prayer to people who look up to you as you move out today? How graceful is the greeting that proceeds from your mouth? How graceful is it? What is your prayer? Do you actually pray as you are part of this devotion? As you pray in your house to step out each day, each day, do you pray for people, especially in the northern part of Nigeria? Do you declare God's peace upon them? Our brothers and sisters, they are suffering. They are in fear day in, day out. And it had extended even to the south. There are a lot of palpable fear everywhere. Do you put them in your prayers? Do I put them in my prayers and release the peace of the Lord upon them to function properly? Also, we must be able to create an environment of peace anywhere we see ourselves. As you move out today, create an environment of peace. It's not just all about prayer. It's about the actions, your action towards your fellow human being. When you create an environment of prayer, people will be able to function properly. You don't know what your act of peace will do to the next person. You don't know what he or she has been asking God for. And by creating that environment, he will be able to be lifted, encouraged in that situation and it goes further to say how graceful is the greeting that proceeds from your mouth how graceful it is you know like i said at the beginning uh, 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 in the Igbo land when we want to say good morning we say ototoma when you tell someone good morning do you really want his day to be good very very important it must carry an act of grace it must carry an act of sincerity from your heart do you really want it to be good? When you salute someone and you greet someone, do you really wish that your greeting will come to pass in such a person's life? Your greeting, your salutation must be graceful. It must carry the grace of God. Your salutation and prayers can attract both the presence and the power of God that can transform the life of a person and reassure them of God's grace in the midst of their challenges. That is the essence of this devotion. Your salutation, your greeting to one another, another should be able to transform them. It's, it will be able to give them hope in a difficult situation. It will be able to show them that there is life at the end of the tunnel. It wouldn't bring downcast in their life. It wouldn't go a long way to suppress them. No, that's not what God wants you to do. That's not what God expects of you. He expects that you speak good words. He expects that you salute properly. He expects that your greetings will lift up souls of others. Even as we move out today, create that environment, environment today and God will bless you. One thing is very certain. What you do to others or what you wouldn't want others to do to you, do them to others it comes back to you when you create that environment others will create that environment for you when you salute properly your salutation is peaceful it has peace it has grace the same thing will be done to you and in conclusion if you are living and your life doesn't make other people's lives easier and better you are amongst men most miserable you should be able to make other people's lives better by your salutation, by your greeting, by your peaceful gestures, and by adding grace into their life.
be conscious of all this that's what the devotional says and our prayer this morning says lord please help me to be a source of lifting to others through my prayers and salutation make it your prayer this morning tell god father help me to be a source of lifting to others through your salutation when you greet others in the morning, they will see reason to leave. So many people are suffering. If you go to the lagoons, if you go to the rivers, you will see people trying to dive in, commit suicide. Probably it's because of the activities of men towards them. The, the way people see them, what they refer them as, they are really tired of living and they try to commit suicide. Let the Lord Almighty, not from your hand, not from what you say, make another person to commit suicide. Pray and ask God for that grace. May our words this morning as we move, may our salutation be peaceful, may it be graceful to one another. And most importantly, Lord, as we do all this, may you as well visit us and may you create that environment for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, give us the grace to always release positivity in the lives of others. As we step out today, releasing God's blessings, encouragement, and hope into the lives of others, by the way we greet and interact, may heaven cause nature and all things you created to work to our own favor. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.